Hello, and welcome to Agrosive Physics. Today is day 43, and what we're going to look at today is normal forces. Now, when we've been drawing free body diagrams, we've often had objects resting on surfaces. For example, a table, or the ground, or the road, or snow, or things like that. An object that rests on a surface is going to experience a force due to that surface. And what's important is that we have a common term for it. Now, we've been calling it the force of the snow, the force of the ground, the force of the table, the force of whatever that object happened to be. But there is a singular term that we can use for any force of a surface on an object. And this is going to be our foreshadowing for friction when we talk about that in a little while, because friction relies on this, this force. In fact, the name for the force is the normal force. And the reason we have this term is because the force is always going to be perpendicular to the surface. No matter what we do to the surface, if we were to have it flat, it would be straight up. But if we were to take it and um, incline it and have it tilted, what you'd find is that the normal force is always going to be perpendicular to the surface. So the surface will always push back on an object at 90 degrees to itself. Now in math, the word normal means perpendicular. We could call it the perpendicular force, but over the years, the normal force just flows better and it sounds a little easier to remember. So what we're going to use is a subscript N, capital N, to represent the normal force. So it's going to be F sub N. And it's always going to be the force of the surface. So no longer will we need to write force table, force ground, force road, or force whatever, snow or whatever it is. Instead, we're going to write F sub N. Now that being said, the question is, will the normal force always be equal to gravity? In a lot of problems, it will be the same as gravity. In fact, if we were dealing with an object that was 10 kilograms just resting on a table, well, 10 kilograms is the mass. We'd multiply that by 9.8 to get 98 newtons. That would be the force of gravity pushing down. And then the force normal going up would be 98 newtons. Now, the way we can do that mathematically is set up an equation. There's no sideways motion, so we wouldn't have to summate the, um, the x direction. But instead, what we would do is sum the y direction. And the way the equation would look would, would be the following. It would be Fn up minus Fg down equals ma. That's our equation. The m was 10, but the acceleration is 0. And that's something that a lot of people get confused with because we often want to use the acceleration when dealing with vertical motion as negative 9.8 meters per second squared. But here's how I remember it. The a in the f equals ma, when you use the summation, is always the actual acceleration. Is it actually moving in that direction? If so, you put the value. If it's not, you're going to put a zero. The only time we're going to use the gravitational acceleration is when we're finding the force due to gravity. So when we find Fg, we're going to set that equal to Ma. Now some textbooks use Mg or W equals Mg, weight equals mass times gravity, to denote the um, gravitational force or the weight of an object. In fact, the reference table uses that as well. What I like to do, to, though, is always just use F equals MA. And if it happens to be gravity, the A I'll replace with a G. I'll just have the A have a little longer stem, and it'll just be a G instead. So my equation for force of gravity is F sub G equals MG. But you're more than welcome to use W equals MG if you want to always associate that with the weight of an object. For me, though, I just, I just got into the habit of using F for everything, and then I'll use a subscript to denote what type of force it is. So F sub N would be the normal force. F sub G will be gravity. Ultimately, friction would be F sub F. But since that's a double F, what we'll end up doing is simplifying that as well. We'll talk about that a little more later. But every force can use a subscript to denote what type of force it is. That being said, in that example, the force of gravity was the same as the normal force. But let's say we put an object on top of the book. So now we have um, an extra 5 kilogram mass resting on top of the book. Well, the free body diagram for the book itself would have the book 
and then gravity putting down, pushing down, we'd have the normal force moving up on the book, but then there'd be a new force downward caused by that five kilogram mass. Remember, Newton's third law is the reason we have a normal force in the first place. So if there's an object resting on the object that's on the surface, what we have is Newton's third law acting on that as well. So there'd be a downward force of five kilograms times 9.8, so 49 Newtons on the book, plus the 98 Newtons on the book downward due to gravity. So the normal force in this case would be 98 plus 49. So that total force would now be my normal force. The table or the ground would have to work a little harder because there's an object resting on top of the object on the surface. That's no different than if you have people in a car. If you have the um, car's weight without people, all of a sudden when you add people to the mix, that's going to add hundreds of pounds to the total weight of the car. Gravity is pulling down on the people. The people are pushing down on the car, and then the car is pushing down on the ground. But since the people are in the car, the normal force acting on the car itself is going to be greater. Now more people are going to equate to a greater normal force inside the car. Sometimes that's going to be preferable, especially during the winter months when you may have snow or ice on the roads. And what you're going to want to do is increase the normal force so that you increase the friction. Friction is a good thing in the case of traction or else your car is not going to spin the tires and move forward. So what people often do is if they're experiencing a lot of um, trouble driving, especially in rear wheel drive vehicles, what they'll do is they'll put a lot of mass in the trunk extra bags of sand or some people use cat litter or things like that and what that will do is increase the normal force of the, of the vehicle. Now normal force we're going to count it as in the center of the object so we're going to look at the center of mass of the object and all of the mass is concentrated at that one point. But the reality of real objects is that depending upon where the mass is distributed that will affect where the normal force is residing. So there could actually be different values that the ground has to exert depending upon where the mass is <clears throat> distributed for the object. For example, on a, on a front wheel drive vehicle, um, what you'll often have is uh, the engine in the front, so you have a lot of mass over those front tires. So that's going to increase your traction. When you have a rear wheel drive vehicle, the weight's still in the front because the engine's there, but then all of a sudden the back is lighter. So it's going to be more difficult for the car to grip into the snow or ice and move forward. Now there's other ways to increase traction and that could be using chains or possibly studded tires. But just with a normal car not changing anything, putting extra weight above the tires would allow them to get better traction. Now that being said, we would not always have a situation where the force of normal, the ground's force, is going to be the same as gravity. Other forces could be involved. In fact, I could even be pulling up on the handle of a wagon. When I'm pulling a sled or a wagon, wagon, when I pull it at an angle, some of my force moves forward, some of my force is being moved upward. What we would have to do is resolve the vector into components. But in the case of pulling the sled or the wagon, as I pull up, I'm actually making it easier for the ground because I'm helping pull the wagon upward. Now, of course, I'm pulling at one side of the wagon, so I'm really only lifting the front end, but the way we look at Introductory physics is we concentrate all the mass to the center point of the object, the center of gravity, and we're going to use that, all the mass acting at that point to determine the force of gravity, number one, and then the normal force, number two. So in the case of a wagon or a sled, what I would do is actually have less normal force than gravity. If we have an object resting on a surface, then that would increase the total normal force. So normal force is not always going to be equal to gravity. Sometimes it will change. But what's important is that gravity will contribute to the normal force, and then other forces that may exist will also contribute to the normal force as well. But we have to take into account all of the vertical forces in order to find the normal force. So once again, this was the normal force discussion, and I thank you. So whenever we have a problem that deals with an object resting on another object, we have force of gravity down, and then we have the upward force opposing the motion by the surface. And we're going to call that the normal force because 
it's perpendicular to the surface. If the surface is flat along the ground, this vertical force is perpendicular to the x-axis, if we have x and y, and we end up having what we call normal, because normal in math is the same as perpendicular. Well, that being said, sometimes we can take an object and place other things on top. Or we could just have someone resting, you know, maybe they're leaning. So there could be a force applied downward onto the, in this case, we were talking about a book before. Now, if we were to draw the free body diagram of the book now, we have the force down. You know, maybe it's the person pushing down. They're leaning on the book. Force gravity. And then we have the normal force. Well, in this case, if we were going to do an equation for this, we would just look at the y direction because we only have three arrows. And notice the arrows are all up and down. So the sum of the forces in the y would be Fn going up minus Fg going down minus F person, I'll just call it FP going down, equals MA. And as long as the person doesn't push the book hard enough to go into the table, what will happen is this term will be zero because it will not have any actual acceleration. So if we look at this, the normal force is going to be equal to gravity plus FP. If I take both of these terms and bring it to this side, they're both added. So in this case, the normal force will be the combination of gravity and the person leaning on the book. Now, I guess we could have a situation where we're trying to make the book lighter. So maybe instead of the person pushing down, there's a little rope, and they're pulling up on the book. Well, in that case, you'd have FP plus FN minus FG equals zero two ups minus a down. And to get Fn, which is the normal force, it would be Fg, bring the negative over, that becomes a positive. But when we bring the person's force over, it's subtracted. So every time we have other forces involved in the vertical direction, it changes the normal force. It either makes it bigger or smaller. And the ground has to either work harder or easier, depending upon direction of the force. We could even have situations that are a little more complex where we might have someone pulling the book with a rope and the rope is at an angle. Well, first we're going to have to resolve that force into components in X and a Y. And then what we'll have is a situation where you'd have Fn plus the Y component, which is up, minus Fg equals zero. So in that case, the normal force would be Fg minus Y. And what that actually does, if, if you think about it, if we're pulling the book up at an angle, it's making it easier for the ground. So the normal force is going to be less than the gravitational force. So the normal force does not always have to be equal to gravity. It can be bigger. It can be smaller. Or if there's no other forces involved in the vertical direction, it can be the same. So there's many options, but you have to face each problem as it comes and be able to adapt to the different problems that you can face.